Peace be upon you, welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom. When Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, he established in its code a fixed number of Bitcoin that will ever exist. Since the protocol first launched, new Bitcoin have been issued on a regular basis, and the total circulating supply is still growing. But it will, eventually, reach its predefined cap of 21 million. Today we'll explain in detail how this works. New Bitcoin are issued as a part of the process for adding new transactions to the Bitcoin blockchain. The miner who wins the proof of work contest gets to add a new block of transactions to the blockchain and receives the block reward as payment for their services. What was their service? It was to find cheapest energy in the real world and turn it into economic energy that can be stored, transferred, and traded in the future. The block reward consists of two components, transaction fees, fees paid to miners for transferring funds between Bitcoin addresses, which vary depending on the level of activity on the network. And secondly the block subsidy, a reward paid to the miner in newly minted Bitcoin. Block subsidies are the sole means of introducing new Bitcoin. For the first four years of Bitcoin's existence, the block subsidy was 50 Bitcoin per block. The block subsidy halves after every 210,000 blocks, i.e., approximately every four years. Eventually, the block subsidy falls to zero, and new transactions will be added to the blockchain with miners no longer receiving a block subsidy, only transaction fees. Satoshi himself wrote about the block subsidy eventually ending, as well as referenced the finite limit of 21 million coins, on the Bitcoin Talk Forum in 2010. Otherwise we couldn't have a finite limit of 21 million coins, because there would always need to be some minimum, reward for generating. In a few decades when the reward gets too small, the transaction fee will become the main compensation for nodes. I'm sure that in 20 years there will either be very large transaction volume or no volume. Satoshi referred to miners performing proof of work when he said nodes. This quote is notorious for two reasons, it is a rare place where Satoshi stated plainly the finite limit of 21 million, and it speaks to a question that has permeated Bitcoin since its inception, will Bitcoin be secure once the block subsidy ends? This image shows the section of the Bitcoin code that determines its supply cap. This code defines the block subsidy included in the block reward that is paid to miners for winning the proof-of-work contest. This is vital to determining Bitcoin's fixed supply because, as noted earlier, all new Bitcoin originate from block subsidies paid to miners. How exactly the supply cap is defined in its code, is relatively easy to prove. The Bitcoin code uses a mix of consensus rules and simple math agreed upon by everyone who runs a Bitcoin node to implicitly establish the limit. We'll break down the code to verify with certainty that Bitcoin's cap is 21 million. To understand what the code says about Bitcoin's total coin cap, the first place to look is the function for block subsidies. This part of the code is vital to verifying Bitcoin's fixed supply because all new Bitcoin originates from block subsidies, which are included, along with transaction fees, as part of block rewards, paid to miners. Here's the function in Bitcoin's code that determines block subsidy, called get block subsidy. This section of code defines the amount of the block subsidy and determines the schedule for its reduction over time by way of the halvings. When the block subsidy reaches zero, it signifies Bitcoin's total supply has reached its limit. It will reach zero, eventually, due to 33 pre-programmed halvings. To understand how the block subsidy is calculated, you first need to know about coin. Coin is an agreed upon value specified elsewhere in the code as 100 million or the total smallest divisible units of a Bitcoin. These are called Satoshis or Sats. The next line in the get block subsidy function defines a fixed number equal to the block subsidy paid on each of the first set of blocks of Bitcoin mined, the 210,000 blocks that occurred before the first halving. In plain English, N subsidy is equal to 50 times the value of coin, 
or 50 Bitcoin. The binary representation of N subsidy, or 50 times 100 million, is 33 bits in length, which will be helpful later for understanding how the code divides the block subsidy with each halving. The critical element of the code is the orbitwise right shift. A bitwise shift is a standard operator in the C++ programming language. Here, it means an arithmetic shift to the right by one bit, which is the same as dividing by two. It's important because it helps illustrate how the supply schedule knows where to cease division. As of the making of this video, we find ourselves today in the third halving. So, we know three things, one, N subsidy equals 50 times 100 million, or 50 Bitcoin, two, the operator three, and three, return N subsidy. The first value in our calculation is a fixed number. The second value changes based on where we are in the halving schedule. A single bitwise right shift removes the last digit on the far right from the string of binary numbers. Converting these binary numbers to their decimal equivalent numbers reveals the subsidy after the first halving. Before the halving 5 billion units of coin, or 50 bitcoin. After first halving 2 billion 500 million units of coin, or 25 bitcoin. A 3 shifts our initial binary number by 3 spaces to the right, which drops the 3 furthest digits and creates another new number. When this new binary number is converted to its decimal equivalent, it equals 625 million units of coin, or 6.25 bitcoin. Every time you shift by dropping an additional digit from the right side of the initial binary string, the equivalent decimal number cuts in half. The scarcity of newly issued Bitcoin due to these bitwise right shifts, occurring every 210,000 blocks, is eye-opening, this invention is a savings technology, it is anti-inflationary and if the consensus rules remain the same, we see it as perhaps the most sound form of money ever invented. The sum of the block subsidies if collected in their entirety is 20,999,999.9769, after accounting for the coins created in the Genesis block not being spendable, early bugs, and miners experimenting with the code, some blocks claimed less than allowed, the total supply is actually less, closer to 20,999,817 Bitcoin. As per the software code of Bitcoin Core, this is the max supply beyond which no new Bitcoin can be created. If you learned something today don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time Assalamu alaikum.